moment everybody's been waiting for not everybody I am going to be needing this project project Christine hasn't been moved for ages so I'm going to as a precaution turn the engine over by hand yeah. 22 mil socket on to the lower uh, the bottom pulley there and crank it over with this might need to take it out of park first. Oh shit. Why did it fall off? That's fine. Ooh. Oh dear, I appear to have an extension that's a little bit too long. That's more like it. Not sure if I've even explained what I'm doing yet, but, well, I'm going to move Project Christine. It'll be the first time it's moved anywhere since it moved from that spot to that spot, which is not very far. And before that, it moved from, well, over there somewhere to there. So, uh, yeah, it's not done a lot of driving around. So, you know, you might be pleased to see this happen. And there is a good reason why I'm doing this today. I took off uh, the O-ring on the fuel line for Nigel when I did the head gasket because it split and I needed one. But then I found one. Yeah, I just, I just found one in the yard. It's quite unusual. And then I found another one, which is even more unusual. Engine turns over, fuel lines back on, just got to jump start the battery and we should be good to go. Except for this. Yes, the path for Christine is somewhat littered with stuff. But I can move all that. But it's not just that stuff, is it? It is. Will the car go through this gap here? It looks like it just about won't do. I could measure it. Or I could just yank that over there a bit. Come on, cat. Yard cat, would you like a can of pigeon? Well, oh. ready for a tidy up. So, can a Rover 45 fit through that gap? <laughs> That'll be enough. That's what happens when you take the fuel line off. It doesn't want to start. So you just use some brake cleaner. I just remember that I took the auxiliary belt off. Without a strong battery, this car won't go anywhere. Move okay.
project, Christine, as you may guess, it's not come out the bushes for no reason. It is to be sold. Well, that's right, this car is going to live on because it's going to get welded up on nicely and used as somebody's daily car. It's going to want a jolly good cleaning up. There's a cat looking round the corner, he looks so fluffy and nice But when you take a second look he's having a shit and he's eating up all the moist I really really am happy it's going to be a fixed away, fixed up and gone away I did an advert for it yesterday which you may know of And it turns out I didn't need to do because the person who's taking this car already knows of this car And in fact he's somebody that quite a lot of people know. So there we go, there's another cliffhanger for you because I'm not going to tell you who it is. <laughs> who do you think, what kind of person is most likely to suffer from road rage? Well, the answer is simple, the victim. But besides that, is it the white van man? Or is it the young man who's passed his test and suddenly thinks he's, you know, Ayrton Senna? Or somebody else, probably wouldn't have heard of Ayrton Senna. Well, I happen to think that there's uh, another type of person that always seems to have road rage, and that is the middle-aged to old man who is still working and he's just quite angry with life. He's usually got a bald head, probably bad breath, and drives a mid-sized Vauxhall. He would have had a Cavalier in the 70s, and then a Cavalier in the 80s, and then a Cavalier in the 90s, and then, you know, a, a Vectra. And now he has a, one, of those, one of those other things that Vauxhall make, uh, a Signet or something. Is it a Signet? No, it's not a Signet. Signature? The Vauxhall Signature. The Vauxhall SIM card, the Vauxhall S Flight Simulator Opal. I don't know, I've got what it's called. On another subject, uh, the other day, one of my commenters said something about Delph. Some interesting facts about Delph. The only thing is I can't remember which of you it was, so I do apologise. But something about... Uh, Rast off was filmed in Delft, was it? Well, maybe, uh, but it was certainly enough to trigger a dream off last night for me about Delft and Brast off and cat's testicles. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been down this far to this area for quite a while. I spent any time down here to see just how quickly things get overgrown. Look at the size of that branch there. This is just going to be a big tree before long, if I'm not careful. We've got lots of, lots and lots of gardening to do, because otherwise I'm going to lose half of my stock. Just taking over everywhere you look. I'm going home early because it's way too hot to be doing stuff outside. And I've got the choice to do that. Imagine actually having to work outside all day and having no choice about it. That'd be awful. The obligatory Aldi ending. Do this quite a lot, don't I? There's a good reason for it. And that reason is, when I finish my day and then I go home, and then realize I've got to go to the shop, there's always things I can think of to tell you. And one of them is, is this. Yesterday I posted some of my cars to various groups. Rover 600 I posted to uh, pre-1996 cars group. And lots and lots of people have commented on it. Lots of people who know me, who know my channel, which is really cool. It makes me feel famous. And then also, when I go into Aldi, which I just did then, and people are saying hello to me because they know me, it makes me feel famous. But then, you know, I did actually know 
these people for other reasons. But it does very much nicely get me onto the topic of Dayton this weekend, which of course I will be there with Nigel. So if you see Nigel or you see me, say hello. Say hello to the car, say hello to me, whichever you prefer. If you want to, have a go with a horn. I do very much like the idea of walking around the place and hearing my eight horn shouty mega thing from a distance. Although obviously don't overdo it because I don't want a flat battery. Anyway, bye for now.